Well, hello and welcome into another edition of MusicArtistForYou.com. I'm Keith Bilber. I'm so excited about today's show. Here's a little country trivia for you. Do you know who the first country artist to have a website was? Well, he's our first guest, Ricky Lynn Gregg. I've known Ricky Lynn for a long time. He's that guy with the long hair. You know what I'm talking about? We're going to sit down and get to know him a little bit better later on. I can't wait for you to hear his music, though. Ricky Lynn's been around for a while. Man, he's still going strong. You're going to enjoy this. Here's Ricky Lynn Gregg. I was 13 years old when my dad bought this guitar. And at the same time, he bought me a 335, Gibson 335. He bought it for $435. And uh, I traded it for a, an old beat-up Les Paul. And I think they're worth about 25000 now. But he kept this guitar, and when he passed away, it came to me. And back in them days, they made these tops real thin and cheap. Now that's the state of the art. You know, uh, guitars for a while there through the 70s and 80s, and even in the 90s, I guess, had these real highly lacquered tops. And they would just muffle down, and then they quit putting the lacquer on like these old $200 guitars in 1973, and they sound pretty good. I'm going to start with a song that was title track from my second album. It goes like this. Baby, you're hanging on the handle of the door. I can't reach you. It's big old force night over here. And getting a little closer. I got some mighty sweet things to say. I ain't going to hear from a mile away. You'd like what you hear. There ain't a single thing to be scared of Don't wanna hurt her when you fall in love so Get a little closer Get a little closer Hold on a little tighter We'll jump from the frying pan into the fire I wanna see the sparks start flying when we touch So get a little closer right now it's just me and the man in the moon Doing our best to get you in the moon All you gotta do is get a little closer Would you help if I turn on the radio Me and George Jones will sing you soft and low We'll take it slow so get a little closer There ain't a single thing to be scared of You don't know when you fall in love Get a little closer So get a little closer Hold on a little tighter We'll jump from the frying pan into the fire I want to see the sparks start flying Right now, I'm on nothing between us but a oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's some great music. Ricky Lynn Gregg, one of our guests today on musicartistforyou.com. He's got more music coming up just for you. As a musician, you understand that your gear needs the very best protection available. You depend on that gear to be in top working condition when you perform. So why not protect it with the very best custom road cases available? Road hog cases are made from the best ABS laminate, casters, and hardware on the market. They custom build each case to your specs for a perfect fit. Don't trust some assembly line case to protect your gear. If you want to know your gear is safe, there's only one answer. Road hog cases. Built by musicians for musicians. Are you a music artist or songwriter that just can't get a break? Then musicartistforyou.com is your answer. Musicartistforyou.com is a totally new way to promote you and your band. 
With our streaming radio stations, online television shows, and major sponsor promotions, MusicArtistForYou.com is your solution to a successful music career. Anyone can sell their music on iTunes or other music services, but how is anyone going to know you're there? So log on to www.musicartistforyou.com to experience music like you've never experienced it before. Good stuff. Tommy Barnes, Wayne Perry, great songwriters, great songwriters. Now, I'd like to do a song for you that I've never recorded. Uh, I've really never had a record that I can honestly say that I could stick this song on. Uh, this song was written um, after heartache. And as we country songwriters know that that's the best time we can write a song is when somebody stomps on our heart not exactly break it because breaking don't hurt us stomping on kind of cracks it up into pieces and uh, it's called fingerprints and I'll sing it to you if I were to reach out I want to touch your hand I feel the fingerprints of another man If I were to sell out Something I don't understand I'd find myself on the run again My heart loves you so that I can fight this ability to know before I've been told. If I were to lay down with my pillow beneath my head. Of another man No, don't try to explain to me Make me understand I 
deal with this matter the best that I can. Ability to know before I've been told. buddy Ricky Lynn Gregg. Isn't he great? He's got some more music for you, and a little bit later on, we'll sit down and talk with him. Time out for this. We'll be right back. Event Audio provides you with top-of-the-line audio system rentals, technical expertise, and professional service in Nashville, Tennessee, and the surrounding areas. When you need a complete and professional sound service for any occasion, look no further than Event Audio. They've been in business since 1966, providing the highest quality service and using the best gear and most professional engineers and technicians available. No matter how big or small your event, if there's audio involved, they have you covered. There's no reason to look anywhere else because their name says it all. Event Audio. Hey music lovers of all ages, are you tired of the same old cookie cutter music that comes out of the same mold where every song sounds the same? Now's your chance to experience great music from established artists and up and coming acts that until now no one was ever going to hear of thanks to musicartistsforyou.com. Musicartistsforyou.com is a totally new media and a new way to experience music, including our very own online radio stations and TV shows with artists and songwriters from all genres of music. So log on to www.musicartistsforyou.com to experience music like you've never experienced it before. When I first got, first was signed to Liberty Records, I met a, uh, well, he ran a publishing company for Jimmy Bowen. And uh, I had the droops pretty bad. And uh, these droops came from the fact that uh, I just signed this thing they call the multi-record deal, which means one or two or ten. And uh, so I was really, really happy and really, really high off of it. But uh, the saddest part of it all is I, I needed to go through a divorce. And uh, didn't have to, didn't want to, but needed to. It was best for both of us. The problem was I had a, I had a six-month-old baby named Cheyenne. And he told me, he said, look, man. He said, what's wrong with you? And I said, uh, I told him my problem. I said, I really got high highs and low lows. He says, well, Ricky, you really need to go home and you need to write songs about these bad spirits. So I went straight to a music store and I bought me eight tracks to a cassette tape. Now, for you listeners and viewers out there that want to know what that is, that's, if you can take a cassette tape and try to put eight tracks on it, that's kind of tiny. But about two weeks later, I woke up at eight in the morning, which is totally impossible for me. And uh, again, this song wrote itself, and it's called Don't Call Home. I'll do my best at it. Since you left our home, I've been down and blue. And the past 
Last I had my bad times So did you I heard your new living lover Left you all alone So if you start feeling lonely Don't call home I know my heart won't take it Knowing that you'll break it All it takes is just one call Though you've said it's over Time and time again you remind me Here's my memory slips Living without you I've had to be strong So if you start feeling lonely Don't call home And we built this house together With everything we own A little girl in November That's when it really felt like home Since we've been apart You've been hard to replace I've had to come to my senses Time's too precious to wait Being without you could be a dream come true But now I know that I'm on my own Moving past you, honey And I'm right here wondering if I'll ever be the same on my own I'm putting my life back together strong So if you start feeling lonely Don't call home If you start feeling lonely Ricky Lynn Gregg, I'm telling you what, I love his music. Just can't get enough. Matter of fact, I don't have to. I got another one coming up, so you stay with us. He'll be back. Fireside Recording Studios is located in Nashville, Tennessee on the world-renowned Music Row. Formerly owned by country music legend Porter Wagner, Fireside Studios is steeped in country music history. Combining great studio architecture and the best in recording equipment, Fireside is without a doubt one of the premier recording facilities in Nashville. So if you're ready to record an album that will burn up the charts, then make sure you record it at Fireside Recording Studios. Outlaw is not a choice, it's a way of life. It's an attitude. Express yourself with Outlaw Wear jeans, t-shirts, and accessories. Outlaw Wear, for those who need to push the limits. Available at www.shopoutlawwear.com. I'd like to kind of wrap this up with the, the song that kind of started the bull to bucking for old Ricky Lynn Gregg. Uh, you know, I'm from Texas, and 
I was fortunate to move here to Nashville, Tennessee when I was in 1992. And this is where I wanted to be as far back as 1986 when I came here to see an old friend named Tony Harold who played piano for uh, Johnny Paycheck. What a ride that was just to hear the stories. And uh, thanks to him uh, and his inspiration, I've got a friend in here right now that said, dream a dream, live a life, have the faith. And that's what I did. It got me right here. And I just learned to this very day that that's what i got to continue having. So if you're out there and you're, you're a young singer, you're a young artist, you're a young songwriter, listen to those three things. And uh, just be careful. Uh, as I said, this is the song that started to bull the bucking. You can get bucked off. And it's not about the getting bucked off. It's about the getting back on. Here's my first single. Your ruby lips, a girl they tempt, and your beauty is a work of art. I could get lost inside your arms. If I had a cheating heart Your eyes tell me You don't need maybe Oh baby You're making it hard yeah, It would be easy Let you please me If I Touch my hand And my knees get weak And if I'm leaving I better start I bet you turn me Every way but loose If I had If I had a cheating heart If I had a cheating heart All right, boys. <laughs> Welcome back to MusicArtistForYou.com. Ricky Lynn Gregg's story is... An amazing story, and I know you're going to want to hear it, so you stick around. We're going to sit down and talk with him for a few moments here on musicartistforyou.com. Do not go away. Sound Kitchen Studios is the Southeast's most prestigious recording and production facility. All of the studios in this 19,000 square foot facility are internationally recognized for their great sound. So it's no surprise that the biggest names in the entertainment industry use the Sound Kitchen. Artists spanning all music genres have recorded at the Sound Kitchen. Elton John, Vince Gill, B.B. Winans, Bruce Springsteen, Safety Suit, Saliva, Alice in Chains, Dolly Parton, Hank Williams Jr., Michael W. Smith, Trace Atkins, Jewel, as well as thousands of indie artists. No matter your location, the Sound Kitchen is the perfect site for song demos, complete album projects, artist showcases, television tapings, and video productions. If you can't travel to the kitchen, ask about our Skype sessions. Work with Nashville's A-Session players from the comfort of your home. This amazing studio complex offers an unparalleled VIP setting. And if you want to throw a private or corporate party, the kitchen has you covered with personal chefs and two full-service kitchens, private lounges, and conference areas. Remember, whether you are signed to a label or just beginning your journey as an artist, it's all about your music and your legacy. 
So get on over to the Sound Kitchen and eat music. Are you a music artist or songwriter that just can't get a break? Then musicartistforyou.com is your answer. Musicartistforyou.com is a totally new way to promote you and your band. With our streaming radio stations, online television shows, and major sponsor promotions, musicartistforyou.com is your solution to a successful music career. Anyone can sell their music on iTunes or other music services, but how is anyone going to know you're there? So log on to www.musicartistforyou.com to experience music like you've never experienced it before. Ricky Landberg, I am so glad you could stop by. Keith, good to be here. It's good to see you. Old friend. Old friend. I, I, nothing like it. Nothing ever will take your place in my life. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've followed you from the very beginning of your career. And your style of music is uniquely Ricky Lynn Gregg. I, you know, when I listen to you, I hear a little George Jones. I hear a little Bruce Springsteen. It, it, you just kind of developed your own style, haven't you? You know, Keith, it's, it's come pretty natural. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, early on in my life, uh, I loved George Jones. And I loved Merle Haggard. Mm -hmm. And I loved Johnny Cash and Hank Senior. And uh, those four records, we might only had five records, but we had those four. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, it'd be when you're a kid, you know, uh, six, seven, eight, learning to sing, and then nine years old, I learned to play guitar. Uh, you wanted to sing just like those guys. Mm -hmm. And when the race is on, was on, you wanted to do that. When Johnny sang, you know, you wanted to flatten it out a little bit. Yeah. And then, like, uh, probably any uh, 13, 14 year old, uh, we all got into Leonard Skinner and mm -hmm. Season Tom. Yeah, I went through my rock and roll period. Now, yeah. Don't tell anybody. Ah, ruined my image. It sure did. <laughs> but for me, uh, you know, I went through a uh, well, period between uh, probably uh, 79 and 89 uh, where I went through stages of my rock and roll success mm -hmm. and uh, made it up to uh, a band that was called Head East. And they had one great hit called Save My Life and Going Down for the Last Time. And uh, I guess it was about two years into that run with Head East that uh, we'd hit these truck stops. And at that time, you could buy the cassettes of Patsy Cline, mm -hmm. of George Jones, and you could get them for about $2. Yeah. And... Uh, Every truck stop, I'd buy one because I lost that one. Mm -hmm. And we would take turns on our bus in Eddie's. And they would listen to all the rock and roll and heavy metal stuff. And I said, it's my turn. And I would put in Jones. So it came real easy to kind of form this rock and country sound. Mm -hmm. Even as far back as about 86, 87, you know, I, I'd go on these rock bars and go, look, I want to play the bottle, let me down. Follow me. <laughs> and, uh, watch me, boy. Watch me, boy. Like Mac <laughs> used to say, watch me, boy. <laughs> Keep up. It's Jimmy okay. Bowen was a big fan of yours and uh, the great producer, and, and he really encouraged encouraged you to do your own thing. I he did. Uh, I can tell you this. When I got signed, uh, they said, listen, this is Jimmy Bowen. He's stronger than Tarzan's armpits. Mm -hmm. And uh, they <laughs> said, that's that. strong, Mickey. Uh They said, now, and we were at, remember Ace of Dime, Ace of Clubs? Sure. It was a black club. Mm -hmm. Well, it was him uh, and four others that came into the back of this room, and here's the stage, and all it was was a, a, an abyss, just black void, and we knew they were out there. Mm -hmm. So we got started about two hours early, just kind of get warmed up. And he came in, and we did 20 minutes, rock solid 20 minutes, bar stuff. And we were told, he'll, he'll get up and he'll leave, and we'll find out. If yes comes quick. Mm -hmm. No, it never comes. <laughs> this time, isn't that right? You don't hear from him. If you don't hear from him, that means no. And uh, he approached the stage. And uh, they said, here he comes, here he comes. Of course, you know, I got high five and everybody was trying to straighten up myself and heart's about to pound out of my chest. And, and he came up and he said, how would you like to be the first man with three first names I've ever signed? Of course, I said, sir. And wow. he repeated himself. And then he said, are you, are you an ex-rock and roller? And I just kind of looked at him. He says, it's okay to say what, yes. What's the right answer? <laughs> he, he said, it's okay Whatever to say Whatever you're looking yes. for, that's what I'll yes, do. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's, it's okay to say yes. He says, uh, he says, I, I hear the future. And, uh, of course, I've proved in this world that you can go just as broke, being ahead of the times, mm -hmm. but you're getting behind the times. Exactly. But, but Bowen told me, he says, listen, uh, after our first two albums, two, CD, excuse me, uh, he said, look, don't worry about making number ones. And hits. We're going to make videos and CDs till 2010. Mm -hmm. They're going to get a hold of it. Of course, he was diagnosed with cancer in uh, 95, and uh, he uh, he gave us good advice. And, uh, you know, I kind of took a hiatus. 
after that because I was worn out after two mm -hmm. records. Yeah. And but Bowen uh, he certainly did encourage uh, this kind of sound, and uh, it sounds like we're just kind of starting to catch up with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm certainly not envious of the fact. I'm just glad that it happened yeah. to validate what we were trying to do as far back as '93. Well, sometimes when you come up with a new sound, it's hard to to break in to radio. Yes. Because radio likes to play the familiar. And yes. Those, was was that a, was that a tough call? Getting the radio stations interested in you? It was, and. Uh, at the time, I was probably bitter at someone because it wasn't happening as fast or as good. Mm -hmm. I knew we were making good videos because we were always in the top ten countdown mm -hmm. on CMT, that was before GAC, and uh, and I was accepted the good encouragement I was getting from Bowen and Lamar Five. You remember mm -hmm. Lamar Five? Sure. So Jim Prater was my mm -hmm. manager, and uh, they kept me they kept me pumped up. Mm -hmm. uh, I do understand that radio back then, you know, when you got a good smooth running Millsap sound, mm -hmm. you got a Steve Warner right behind him, and then Ricky Lynn Gregg spikes the, the meters. <laughs> I understand I've now. I've seen those meters. Yes, I understand now <laughs> that, that that played something to do with it. And uh, I think that if I had a cheating heart uh, was put out today, it would probably do better than it did back then. Mm -hmm. um, well, I've always thought it was a good record, well, regardless of what it You know, that song was great back when Mel Street did it. Mm -hmm. That's where I learned it from Sandy Powell. She turned me on to it. And, uh, it's now, that's Street country. Right that's there. country. That's country you and, can get. Yeah, absolutely. So I, 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 I realize why now, uh, back then, it was, you know, just thought it was personal. Mm -hmm. It was not. Yeah. You and I are very fortunate in that we came to town at a time when so many of the legends were still around. Yeah. We got to hang out with. We him. did. And did that, well, tell me about that experience. Well, I think he, you 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 knew my mother. Yeah, Lucy. I loved your mother. Oh man, it's, so sorry. It's all about. Well. She's she's in a better place. And she's right here also. Mm -hmm. uh, but she's uh, looking at me right now. She saying, is. You better treat my boy right. <laughs> well, you got that right. Uh, I got to bring her to town in '86. I remember and, that. Uh, you know, a friend of mine got me backstage at the Opry, and she really educated me. And she was the one that, that made sure that I never forgot where country came from. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't so much, you better sing that. I used to write my own songs. She says, now, get out there now and you program and make sure you sing some songs they know. Mm -hmm. And she meant Silver Wings. Sure. You know, uh, and, uh, but she got, she stormed George Strait's bus. Of course, he wasn't on. <laughs> but when we got to the Opry, I got to personally uh, meet little Jimmy Dickens, Porter Wagner, Dale Reeves, mm -hmm. which is probably one of my biggest heroes. Dale just had that. Dale had a rock and country sound before yeah, rock and country. He really did. He uh, really did. did indeed. And he just had that, you know, that, that thing there. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, then I made records. And then I really got to know him by first name. You know, mm -hmm. Jack Green. Mm -hmm. And my wife, oh my Lord, when she met Jack Green, she thought she had gone to heaven. Mm -hmm. And uh, Statue of a Fool. And, uh, but the man I, still sings. I, still this day. Well, we well, saw him at the well, Mel McDaniel yeah. uh, benefit. Yeah. And thing. But, uh, I was real fortunate. And then, you know, I got to be real good friends with George and Nancy Jones. Mm -hmm. And, you know, George told me for about eight years. Up until about George wasn't real sure about that hair. First. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't. Well, he once he got past yeah, that. Yeah, when he got past that. <laughs> and Nancy, too. They, they got me out of some jams. And only a true friend to do that. But, uh, you know, Waylon Jennings, though. I was doing a spring show with him back then. He wasn't sure about Wayland's hair either. Well, I, I wasn't sure about Waylon. <laughs> but Waylon called me on his bus and he said, you know, I like you. You kind of remind me of me. You ain't here, uh -huh. and you ain't here. He uh -huh. said, well, son, I want to warn you right now. Right here ain't so bad. Mm -hmm. So I've been able to embrace right there, like this new program they got on TV, The Middle. Mm -hmm. It's uh, It can be pretty comfortable. Yeah. So. Well, you're still here. You're still standing, still doing well. What inspires you? What What just uh, sets you on? You were, you were talking in your performance of things that uh, inspired you to write a song. What, what happened? But what grabs you? You know, if it's something good uh, in a song, uh, if I'm going to write a song and I've got some, I've got joy in my heart, mm -hmm. uh, it really comes out in goosebumps. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I can get I can get the subject, and the rest will write itself. Now I know there's no adage in this town that it's 99 percent perspiration and 1 percent mm -hmm. inspiration. That's true. This song can really chisel out some songs, and they can do it in three or four hours or three or four days. Mm -hmm. But a song that I really get inspired if I'm if I'm heartbroken mm -hmm. or if something's bad happened with someone and I can see, I can hear a song brewing, mm -hmm. it comes in the form of tears. Mm -hmm. And if a song makes me cry, then I know that's it. it. 
you know, uh, I wrote a song called Cheyenne about my little girl. And then I, we wrote it, and then I put it down on a 12 track, and I cried so hard for the next 10 times I listened to it. A song called Don't Call Home, mm -hmm. which was a song yeah. that I never Great intended song. for to be on record, but it was on my last CD. Uh, it was one of those get this off my chest. Mm -hmm. and, well, now, what was it you said you were going through? A drooper. Here. Yeah, it was a, a drooper. drooper. Uh, you know, it's when you got high highs, low lows, uh -huh. and uh, because you can't get high enough until he comes sliding. Mm -hmm. You get on the mountain, like Merle said. I only, you know, I'm only on top when I fall. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's the way it was back then, Keith. That, you know, I, I needed to get a divorce from my from my six month old son mm -hmm. because he wasn't right, mm -hmm. and uh, and we knew it. It was just tough. Yeah. And here I get this stuff, this grand rare deal, not just from Lippy Records, but from Jimmy Bowen. Yeah. You know, Jimmy says, hey, look, go record tomorrow. If you can sing and play on tape, you got a deal. I'm the first three-name guy. I'm the first. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Never you come on, you know. And uh, Pretty historic. Right it there. was. And, and, you know, it might have been at the time, and I didn't hate to say it, and I won't, but uh, it might have been on the crest of some other things happening. Mm -hmm. There was a couple other bands that were kind of doing what I was doing up there. You know, uh, Kentucky had owners. Billy Ray Cyrus, they were coming a little more edgy, mm -hmm. and uh, they had success. And I don't know that if Bowen, uh, well, let's just put it this way. In a song, there is its own entity, entity. Mm -hmm. and it has to be driven by spirit, or I can't write it. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, I've, been, I've, I've written for two publishing companies in this town, and something about a windowless room, mm -hmm. and two guys with three guitars, mm -hmm. uh, and we're sitting there trying to put something together. I just like when it comes a little more natural, mm -hmm. and uh, I can I can sing what I lived. Yeah, put it that way. There you go. I've, I've sung it there. I've lived it. Therefore, I can therefore, sing and sing write it. it. And you will believe it. How is uh, I know you're you, you're uh, a Christian, and you openly admit that, and are proud of it. How, how does that help you through this crazy music business? You know, morning thank you. It helps me through this world. Yeah, exactly. Because you know when I'm singing, I'm playing. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and I. I come from a Southern Baptist, and you know my daddy went about face, and not about face, excuse me. He went, he took it a notch up, mm -hmm. and we became uh, Pentecostal, and and uh, and even not Pentecostal, but uh, and I'm I'm searching for what they call themselves, but uh, it's evangelical. Well, it, it was House of Holiness, mm -hmm. and in other words, it's Pentecostal, but they're only going to be about ten or fifteen of y'all. Mm -hmm. And and show up at ten, but don't you ain't gonna get out at noon. You don't get out <laughs> when they get there singing. When we get through with it. And uh, I've been I've been there. Yeah. And I went from Southern Baptist. My mother was not, she was not Pentecostal. And of course, when she took me and my mother into a Pentecostal house of, uh, of worship, you know, my my mom was like, you know, I love Jesus, but I don't worship that way, no, mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. But I continued to go with my father, so I kind of got to see the conformed way to praise Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then just a wide open baby pedal oh, to the metal, you yeah. know. And these people were, they didn't have a dime. They were there because if they went home, they would do nothing. That was back in the days when there wasn't the three channels, ABC, CBS, and NBC. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was at that point I realized these people ain't faking because, you know, Pentecostal sometimes gets, well, in those days, got the mm -hmm. bad rap of being, oh, they're putting on mm -hmm. and they're doing this. Well, I, 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 I felt the Holy Spirit. And I felt it as a, as a, a viewer, mm -hmm. you know, I got to sit on the outside, and I remember what my mother said, and I was seeing what my daddy's doing, and they're singing and playing, and they're not giving up. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then, you know, I get in the music business. I'm uh, 15 years old. I'm playing in the bars. That's that's hard to imagine, but that's the way it was in Long Beach, Texas. Mm -hmm. There was too many bars and not enough fans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, you know, by the time I was probably 18, I, I had been part of scenes of murder and scenes of. Uh, drug abuse and alcoholism and people maintaining and a lot of people walking in okay and about a couple of months in these bars and stuff and I'm the house band and mm -hmm. I'm seeing them crush mm -hmm. and uh, I can put it to you this way there's a lot of people that find Jesus and the Holy Spirit by seeing a lot and I can tell you I, feel, I found him by feeling the heat mm -hmm. and uh, you know when I'm doing good that's when I fail to pray mm -hmm. and then that's when I did love Mm -hmm. And it don't take but a life to slap me in the face <laughs> with something or another, and me worry about it harder than I ever should. Yeah. Then I know that I got to get on with bended knee. Yeah. And that's when I surrender. Yeah. And then when I surrender, Keith, I ask the Lord to come into my heart and use me because I know I'm a performer. And there's people that admire me for my music. Mm -hmm. And I'll get a call and somebody will be praying. 
and I'll get another call and somebody will need some encouragement. And I will be giving testimony for something I've already lived mm -hmm. by feeling the heat. Yeah. And then I get a blessing from it. And it's only when I fail to do that that uh, things go south. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, at my age, it's real easy to stay on track. Mm -hmm. And uh, committing and surrendering. Surrendering's first, but committing. Can I do this tomorrow? Well, mm -hmm. I can do it today. Yeah. And as long as I wake up and have prayer first thing in the morning, man, I'm okay. Turning it over and letting it go. Let it go. <laughs> you know, read a, go to Psalms and just read, read, read yeah. down. Yeah. And if I start my day like that, I need to do it. Yeah. If I don't, you know, I don't know what the devil's going to throw at me. We mentioned your precious mama earlier. I, I, I don't think it's, it, you, you will not be in a conversation with Ricky Lynn Gregg very long until mama comes up. Right. She was a huge, huge influence over you. You yes. lost her. Just Passing. recently, yes. yes. And uh, I, I would imagine that your faith really, really helped you through that time. Huh? It did. It, it, it did. And, you know, she was in a care facility. Mm -hmm. A lot of these people call them old folks home. I, I'd like to call it a care facility because everybody cared for her. Sure. As soon as she got there, she was a very animated person to the moment she passed on. And she stayed there four years and three months. Mm -hmm. Four years and two months, excuse me. I want to be accurate. And she lived, and, and, and that's... That's when I started having a hard time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's when she passed on that I began to feel her presence even more. Mm -hmm. When she was over there in that care facility, I agonized with her. I couldn't mm -hmm. hardly go see her. And that's when she needed me the most, you would think. But we've got, I've got four wonderful brothers. Mm -hmm. And I explained this to one of my brothers who was having a hard time doing what I couldn't do. Mm -hmm. Go see her in the, in the nursing home. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I just had a hard time. But I think about all those times I got to bring her to the altar and how she met every singer she wanted to meet. Uh, she got to be friends with him. And as we were talking earlier off camera, uh, Johnny Frazier. Johnny Russell. Johnny Excuse Russell. Johnny Russell. Johnny Frazier will like that. Johnny, that would be cool. <laughs> Johnny Russell. Who wrote, they ain't going to put me in the movies. And I'd naturally have a slew of others. Mm -hmm. But he loved me. And at the end, of, towards the end of his time here on earth, he would still do the opera, but he would feel good. Mm -hmm. And I caught him as he was exiting the building at, after getting off stage. And I grabbed him, and he didn't look like he could feel good. And he spun around and goes, where's your mom? Mm -hmm. And I got to wave her over. <laughs> but, you know, because it's the hustle and bustle backstage at the opera. Yeah. And uh, she was that kind of big in the light, you know. And I, I told my brother, I said, you know, it took five of us mm -hmm. to get her through life. Yeah. And... Uh, I and it just took one of her to get the five. Five, that's <laughs> right. You know, and she used to pray. She used to, she used to pray this. She used to pray, thank you, Lord, for loaning me these boys. Oh, I know they're yours. Oh, and what a beautiful prayer, you know. Well, I, uh, my friend, if you never sell another record, if you never do another TV show, you made your mama very, very proud. Well, I appreciate I could, I could look at her and tell that. <laughs> so good to have you. Great to be here, Keith. I, I love you. I and love I'm, you, too, I'm buddy. So, so glad you got to come on. I got to hear some of your music. Well, today. you know what? You befriended me at a time where you could have befriended somebody a lot bigger in, in this town. And I kind of wish I had it now. No, <laughs> but you, you, you were one of the first people I met. And one of the first interviews I ever did back in 92. And uh, we've been buddies ever since. You bet. And I'll pay you that. Honey. He's on Facebook, by the way, if you want to be his yeah. Facebook friend. Please do. Have you hit the top yet? I mean, you only have so many. Well, uh, I haven't, but... Uh, well, we you got, will now. We, yes, sir. <laughs> Not better. Thanks for coming by.